Dante, just how much do you feel like you know you've improved coming into this season? You know, going into your fourth year here. I like to say that I improved a lot, really. Uh, just becoming a better leader, a uh, more mature mindset, and pushing everyone to get better. I know that you know you you know somebody who came in, you've had to you know, put on a lot of weight since you've gotten here. Like, do you feel mm-hmm. physically like you're the best you've been? Yes, I do. I, f- I physically feel that um, I'm in the best shape that I've been, really. Uh, weight-wise, I don't really feel a difference. I feel like my speed is increased and everything. How much do you view this as like your opportunity to step up, become a leader, and play a bigger role this season? I'm sorry, could you ask me like, How much do you kind of you know view this as your opportunity to step up and kind of be a leader on the defensive line this year? Uh, I feel this as a, a, a great opportunity for me. Uh, Losing Coop, he was one of our, our main leaders, and I feel that when it comes to this D-line class, we're, we're all around the same age, and so we just got to push the young guys to get better and just make sure that everyone is, is on the same set of goals and the same path. You mentioned the young guys. What have you seen from Jack and JP so far? Uh, I've seen them do a lot of good things. Uh, both will have good speed and bend off the edge. I kind of think that they're they're kind of headed on the right path of being for being a freshman there. Very good shape. Is that exciting to think about with you and Tyreek and Zach and then those guys coming in, like the potential you all have as a defensive end unit? Oh my God, it's, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it kind of like scares me of the things that we could do, but you just you just got to see it and we're taking it day by day and trying to get better. Uh, I feel like the O line makes us better because it's really iron sharpening iron. I would say that came about when Zach first came in. Uh, that spring, we weren't really close, but then as we started getting closer to, to the season of his freshman year, we kind of uh, really came together being during camp and always being around each other, trying to push each other to get better. And we've been doing that since he's really gotten here. I pushed him and he's pushed me. I also have a lot of drive, but really focus on making sure that we're all leading in the same path. Just making sure that I'm there for everyone. If they need a shoulder to talk to, uh, be more of a leader. That's what I'm really focused on. Well, I think it was maybe about a week ago, we were in to watch a little bit of practice, and you got to be the guy in the huddle right before the team went out and talked. That caught my eye because you never seemed to me like the most vocal guy on this team. When did that transition occur that you felt maybe comfortable with that, or were you comfortable doing that? Uh, as kind of, I'm not really like a vocal leader. I'm kind of like a lead by example. But then what, what comes when you're being at Ohio State, you're put in uncomfortable situations. And when you're in those uncomfortable situations, they, they sometimes become comfortable. So that was kind of a range I wasn't used to. But then as I get to do it more, uh, it would be something that I just become used to. Did you know that it was going to be your turn? Did they just put you on the spot? Did, did you have a chance to prepare for it? Uh, I probably had five minutes to prepare. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like I did good. All right. So it's, that's starting to become more comfortable then. And yeah. So how important is that when you're talking about this, trying to be a veteran, turn things, get the rushmen to turn those pressures into sack? Like where, how much of that leadership part is important in bringing that around? I say that that leadership in part is very important. Because if a, if a guy's having a bad day, you pick him up. Uh, some things are going good. You keep you keep telling them, all right, you're doing this well. Well, we got to fix this so we can get better, even better. You just want to make sure that everyone is, is on a trending path and you don't want no man to fall behind and kind of dip down, pick him back up, and let's go. Tyreek said that last year you guys could look at the pressure rate and it was about what you wanted, but converting them to sacks was not where you guys wanted. How do, you, how do you turn that into the results that, that we're really want? I say pass rushing more cleaner, uh, fixing up on techniques, uh, flipping hips, bending edges way better, and just having that last burst at the end of your rush to make sure that you're good. What is your weight at right now? 255. How much stronger do you feel than you, when you got here? Because I think you're only like 215 when you came in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
I feel much stronger uh, being when I came in as a freshman trying to play defensive end and setting the edge on like Isaiah Prince. It kind of wasn't good, but then like where I am now, I can feel that like this is this is where I am, and this is how much stronger I've gotten. Well, you at all when you see guys like Jack and JT come in as developed as they are as freshmen? Uh, it really doesn't wow me because you see all types of people at all different ages, and they could be some are bigger, some are smaller. But then that's just the route you were you were given that you have to take. Everyone has a different style. Speaking of bigger, what have you seen from Dewan? Yeah. What have I seen from Dewan? Dewan, Dewan is really good. I'm not. Uh, he makes me better, because being that you have to r rush on a bigger tackle, it's a lot. It's a lot more complicated. And me getting that practice, it's I love it. Why is it more complicated? Uh, because you're, you're dealing with a, a bigger individual who can move. Okay, to go back to what Dan was asking about the weight when you got here and the process, when you started talking to Coach James, going back three or four years, did you envision that you could really you would change this much? He presents to you, you're going to be a defensive end, and you're going to get to 255 pounds. Like, that's 50 pounds. That's got to be hard to think about if you're 17. Like, yeah, I, I'm not going to I didn't kind of think it was going to happen. But then uh, they kind of told me, like, look, you have to frame for it. You just have to trust and trust in us. And you have to trust yourself that you can do it. And that's what I did. Did you fight that at all? Like, I can just play outside linebacker. I move well. Why do you want to turn me into this? Uh, I didn't kind of really fight it. I just said, hey, this is what they want me to do, I'm, so I got to go do it. When did you believe it? When did I believe that I could do it? I'd say after my freshman year, transitioning into my sophomore year that winter. That, uh, working out with Coach Mick a lot and just being with him and him helping shape my mentality more. I was like, yeah, this is this is what I could do. So Mick shaped, shaped your mentality as much as your physical being? Yeah. How did you do that? Uh, just pushing me every day, challenging me. Uh, I, me and Coach Mick are very close, and he would tell me, all right, you got to eat, you got to gain weight, you got to get stronger, and just doing, staying with him, doing extra reps and stuff when I was a young guy, just him him helping me and molding me into becoming who I am today. How important is it to have people like Coach Jay, like Coach Mick, who believe in you, and then to also trust in them when they give you advice? Uh, you have to, at a certain point, you have to realize, like, this is their job. They, Coach Mick has been around plenty of athletes way before me, and you've seen the success he has. So then you, you look at yourself and say, hey, if he can do that for them, why can't he do it for me? Like, why can't I do that? So then you realize, like, all right, let's go do it. Devontae, Zach has certainly come out of a shell with us. I guess he's always been out of a shell with you guys. What's his personality always been like? <laughs> I say Zach is... He's kind of like a character. He's really funny at certain times. Uh, he could be serious when he wants to, but at the end, he's just a fun guy, really, really to be around. I mean, during the recruiting process, he he was kind of like, didn't want to talk. Didn't, I mean, just when you think about that and what he is now, it's like two different people almost. Yeah, I'd say it's two different people, but then it just shows you that he's gotten comfortable around us and he's to the point where he feels like he can open up. And how good a player is he and can he be? Zach Harrison? Zach, I feel like Zach hasn't even touched his ceiling. He has so much he that he could do. It. He hasn't touched his ceiling. Like, yeah. he, he has no cap. He could, he, I feel like he's a player that will always get better. He finds something to get better at. Has he uh, shared his dad's chili with you as one of the things that you're allowed to eat? He hadn't shared his dad's chili. Hey, you ain't share your dad's chili with me. Your dad be cooking chili and you ain't share it? <laughs> That's crazy. I did have a red velvet cake. I did have that, but the chili though. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh oh, looks like I just got him in trouble. <laughs> uh, what What about your diet then? You know, you talk about you know he talked about basically being able to eat whatever he wants, including his dad's chili. What about you and how have you you know hit that kind of weight that you want to be at? And, and what has Coach Mick done to help you get there? Uh, I say Coach Mick would tell me, eat any time I can. It doesn't matter. Like, he would tell me, you're not going to get fat. So what is the point? So I really just eat a lot. Like, I eat canes late at night, uh, Chipotle during the day. I'll probably go through two Gander mass shakes. And then with the amount of how we work out and how hard we go, you kind of really won't put on any body fat because you're, you're going hard.
you guys have a lot of veterans on the defensive line, you, Zach, Tyreek, Haskell, Tehran, how much do you think that helps you guys to have so many guys with playing experience on this unit? Oh, I think that helps us a lot because we all know what happens in the game and this could lead us to push each other like, hey, like, if we want to be this elite unit, we have to do things this way because we know the expert we've been there and we know what to expect so we kind of we're kind of like carrying a legacy and making sure that it keeps getting passed down and going in the right direction Anything else? Right. what are you seeing oh, the Vincent right now Teron Vincent ooh Teron Vincent i say Teron Vincent right now he's in he's he's in peak performance right now i feel like i feel like Teron is is in is in some good shape right now and he's looking very good to me well, what, what does peak performance mean? Like, what do you see from him with the big seven? Part? I mean, Teron Vincent, he can, he can move. For him to be that size, his hips are good. He has a great first step. Larry said that they've been cross-training Haskell and Teron to potentially play together. What do you think that could bring to your defensive line if they're both on the field at the same time? Mm -hmm. I'd say that could bring a lot of versatility, really, just to have them moving around, so you constantly don't know which who's going to be on what side. Right, so you, know, you don't know who's necessarily the nose tackle, who's the free tackle? Mm hmm It cause confusion. What's, uh, what's Teron's attitude bring you guys? <laughs> I say Teron's attitude, it helps bring some more energy. It brings a, a little, kind of like a little meaner side out of you that you need. It's that little edge you need in football. It makes you meaner? Yeah. Right. But he's a, I mean, it's just him. It's who he is. I can't, I can't really explain it. It's just being around him and knowing him. He said he's always happy. Even when he had the injuries, he was like upbeat. Is that the way he's always been? Yeah. But how does he make you meet him? I'd say how, because he pushes you and I, like, he's, he's a, a happy guy, but he pushes you in the direction like, hey, come on, like, we got to, we got to be more physical, like. You gotta go play harder. So then that that chip, that turns on a chip on the other edge. Like, let's go. Have you ever seen him get down because of the injuries? Hmm? Have you ever seen him get down because of the injuries? No. Yeah, I mean recently it's been kind of weird. All right. Thank you, Javante. Thank you, Javante. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.